Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Pastor Jay North, and welcome to the OUC Attic Youth Discussion Starter Video of the Week. This week, we have another amazing lesson with Pastor Kevin. Pastor Kevin is going to break down John the Baptist and how he responded to Jesus' gaining popularity and seemingly him losing his popularity. Listen, we've all been through it where somebody else gets all of the shine. And what should be our response? Well, Pastor Kevin is going to break it down for us. So Pastor Kevin, hey, share this with us. Have you heard of the spotlight effect? The spotlight effect is a way of thinking about ourselves that makes us feel like this imaginary spotlight is always on us. It makes you think that other people are paying more attention to you rather like than anybody else in that in that place. Makes you think that that you're the only person other people are noticing. Have you felt like that before? So so imagine you're hanging out with your friends. You drop some spaghetti on your shirt. You might rush to the bathroom thinking that like all eyes are on you. But next week when you mention this incident to your other friends and tell them that this is what happened to you, they'll probably look at you and be like, I, dude, I, I can't even, really? Did that happen? Because the truth is that in any given situation, most of the time, people are only thinking about themselves. People are only thinking that like, they have this spotlight on them and like nobody else has a spotlight and so they have to kind of perform in certain ways. So can you see how this spotlight effect can actually have some negative you know, impacts on our lives if left unchecked? On an individual level, the spotlight effect makes us think that, that we are the main character in any given situation. This can actually cloud your judgment and makes you do only the things that you know will get you more attention or get you more approval. And on a group level, the spotlight effect can stop you from, from learning from other people, learning from other perspectives, because the story that you tell yourself is that you have complete accurate information about the thing that you want to talk about at any given time. And all of this can actually make you more stressful in a, a social situation. Because because why? Because you, you, you think that all these all these eyes, all these people are just somehow watching you and you have to now perform for them. So how can we avoid it? I think the relationship between John the baptizer and Jesus Christ, his cousin, can give us a good starting point uh, in, in addressing how we can overcome the spotlight effect as, especially as uh, followers of Jesus. So if you remember the story at the time, John was getting a lot of followers. He was going around teaching and preaching about the kingdom of God. People are like, yo, John, that was so cool. Yo, you gotta listen to my boy, John. He's dropping that heat. Yo, have you heard this John guy? Bro, like you haven't, you haven't heard anything like this dude. And he was trending on Twitter. He was trending on TikTok. He was trending on Snapchat. Like people were talking about this guy all the time so he he has a, he has a lot of followers at this point but when jesus shows up to the picture guess who gets anxious ah yes the followers of john so they come to john and say bro like do you have you checked out this jesus guy like he's coming and trying to steal our thunder bro john's disciples probably saw jesus as a threat to their influence and their clout but you have to see how john responds to this it's it's so good i'm reading from john chapter 3 from the message translation this is what john says to his disciples check it out you yourselves were there when i made it public that i was not the messiah but simply the one sent ahead of him to get things ready the one who gets the bride is by definition the bridegroom and the bridegroom's friend his best man that's me in place at his side where he can hear every word is genuinely happy. How could he be jealous when he knows that the wedding is finished and the marriage is off to a good start? That's why my cup is running over. This is the assigned moment for him to move into the center while I slip off to the slide lines. Wow. You know, at the time, Jesus didn't have the following that he had towards the end of his life. John was way more popular. You see, John could have said something against Jesus so he could like, you know, keep his followers. At this time, the spotlight was actually on John. But John recognized at that time who Jesus was and who John was not. And this is why he says, he must become greater and I must become less. Now coming back to our time today, what does this mean to us? Does this mean now that we have to now put ourselves down so that we can raise somebody else up? Is that what humility really means? No. Humility is different from humiliation. One of my favorite authors, C.S. Lewis, defines humility as not thinking less about yourself, but thinking about yourself less. 
Humility as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus, is to recognize that, that you and I are created by God. It is to choose to see yourself from the light of who God is and not necessarily from the spotlight you think you have. And friend, when you see yourself from the perspective of God, you will realize that the universe does not revolve around you. You will still think about yourself. You'll still feel feelings and, and thoughts and all those different things that happens because you're human. But over time, you begin to develop a heart of love for the things of God. And that now leads to kind of have this awareness that you can learn something from other people. You can learn from each other, including people that, that you may disagree with because you are now seeing your life, your story, not from the light of your spotlight, but from the light of the glory of God. You begin to serve other people with kindness, with love, with truth, with justice. My friend, the more you choose to follow Jesus, the light of the world, by doing the things that he did, the more you will learn eventually over time to dim the light of your spotlight, the, the spotlight that you think you have, which you don't. And instead, continuously increase the floodlights of God's grace, of God's glory, that is currently shining through your life. Will you let God do that today? Wow. That lesson was amazing. And John the Baptist, <laughs> listen, this dude was full of God's spirit. Um, just how he responded, just what he said in those words, just powerful. And he got just as much, if not more, excited and fulfillment seeing Jesus begin to fulfill his role and mission as he did when he was doing his. So listen, we certainly can take a page out of John's book. We don't have to hate y'all. We don't have to get mad at somebody else. Matter of fact, we ought to celebrate when people around us are doing well. And I heard one person say, man, if God is blessing others, you might want to hang around because he's coming to bless you soon. So that's our time together today. I know you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it as well. And we want you to like and subscribe. I'm Pastor Jay North. This is the OUC Attic, a teen's time in church. Hey, don't forget at 5 p.m., AY Snap with Boss Man and Kaboom. Listen, we got another uh, crazy video for you today. And then as this ends, there are some discussion questions that you can spend today talking with uh, your parents, maybe your siblings, maybe your friends, and just kind of digest these questions. All right, later. <laughs>